In this special edition of Your Healthy Family, certainly living healthy is important. Excellent medical care and public servants who have life-saving skills, important as well. Add in some good Samaritans and you have the ingredients required to save a life. 60-year-old Dan Geary is an avid cyclist in top shape. Well, I always thought fitness would give me a long life. But on July 13th, 2017, he learned otherwise. Well, memories kind of slim to none. I just know I was out on a bike ride. I was into my ride about 26 miles. I was looking at about a 45 mile day. There was no signs of an issue. I was actually on a really good ride. Ended up in a side of a road having some serious problems. Lisa Kirkman is an attorney with El Paso County. I was coming back from a meeting at the jail and I saw a very athletic bicyclist speeding down the road. I thought to myself, he really knows what he's doing. Deputy Carlos Gutierrez was getting ready to go on vacation. I wasn't going to go to uh, CJC that morning. Uh, it wasn't part of my plan, but I happened to divert coming back from an event. All of a sudden, he just fell over. Didn't hit anything, no wobbling, just fell over. Um, so I put my blinker on and stopped. As I'm leaving CJC, I see uh, Lisa Kirkman flagging me down, and, uh, and then I see Dan uh, on, the, on the ground on the bicycle. 11, I need an AMR, 2,600 block of East Las Vegas. Um, white male, approximately late fifties. He's not responding. I don't think he's breathing. Okay. okay. Is he conscious? Ah, uh, he's not conscious. Is he breathing? Negative. Lieutenant J. D. Ross wasn't far from the scene. When I heard Carlos call out. Um, on the air that there was a man down. I could tell in Carlos's voice that this was was not just the average call. He had stopped breathing and he had no pulse. Uh, I jumped in my car heading down to him because he called it out and it was, it was down by our jail facility. Is his breathing completely normal? Negative. Okay, is he conscious? He's not breathing, should I begin CPR? A-firm, lay him flat on his back on the ground. Advise me when that's done. Go. Is he flat on the ground? Hey, very flat, flat on the ground. CPR has the gun. Okay. Is there anybody else there with you? Hey, firm, two civilians. I ran hot down there, and he started CPR with the assistance of um, Lisa Kirkman and then our dispatcher, uh, who was on the air that day, did a phenomenal job as well. She helped keep help him him keep a cadence. I copy. CPR seems to be working. Okay. You should be doing it at a rate of one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Keep that rate going until they get there. The ambulance arrived on scene just before Lieutenant Ross. As I got down there, they were loading Dan into the ambulance. So we grabbed his, his bike and escorted the ambulance up to the hospital. Dan was rushed to UC Health Memorial, where cardiologist Dr. Russell Linsky was one of the first doctors to see him. Initially, we did a cardiac catheterization, and we looked at the arteries of the heart under X-ray. We identified where the problem was, and put I put in two stents uh, to that blood vessel. In this business, speed is really important important and so getting there very quickly ready to do the right procedure at the right time on the right patient uh, is how we is how we work and frankly I'm really proud of the systems we've put in place I think we are able to provide really world-class care to uh, our patients I was probably five days in before I remember much of anything and it was it was still a blur even when I got out of the hospital fortunately enough two people that happened to see me fall and have the issue were quickly on me, um, administrated CPR at the time, kept everything flowing, the blood to my brain flowing very well, and uh, to this day, saved my life. Without them, I wouldn't be sitting here. The miraculous nature of Dan's story actually begins with Dan himself and a decision he made the day of his heart attack. What I do remember is I, you know, particularly was going to go ride my mountain bike up in the Mount Hermon area, which I changed my mind to decide I would go on the road bike which was a good decision because people found me on the side of the road having an issue where on a mountain bike I would have been up in the trails. And because he made that choice, about six weeks after nearly dying, Dan and his wife Ann both had the chance to meet the people that saved Dan's life. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. You cry, Are you my... Cry. It was very good to see you, Lyser. Wow. Wow. Man, I don't know what to say.
You don't have to say anything. I mean, just, man. You feel good? I feel fantastic. Oh my gosh. I like you with color oh in your gosh. face. <laughs> It's good to see him walking and talking. It's, I mean, it's great. this is yeah. un so how do you feel? unbelievable. I feel fantastic. Good. Um, good. You know, with with you guys just on it immediately, th there's just no issues. There's no heart damage. There's well, just we, we were meant to be there, I think. Um, oh man! It wasn't anything that anybody of us planned. We were driving that day, and uh, so you guys were what in separate cars? Separate cars. I was driving my patrol car, and I. Oh, you're in the patrol yeah. car. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mainly, what I did once you got on your back was I just stayed and encouraged you. Yeah. But I was thinking, if that happened to my loved person, what would I want? Someone to hold their hand. Yeah. Someone to pray, and um, someone to encourage me. So while he did his thing, yeah. that's what I did. Thank you. I did that for you. It, it was difficult because I wasn't here riding with him. I, I didn't see it happen. So reliving it through them and hearing what they did, um, it, it, it was hard, but it was comforting at the same time because I knew that he was in really good hands. Um, and I just uh, appreciate and love those guys so much for what they have done. They just went out of their way to take care of a complete stranger. So you recognize almost immediately that I, I was... recognized the necessity for CPR right away. So, okay. so I began CPR as soon as I could. I'm still sore. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I was going to say, I'm sorry. I, I felt some cracks, uh, some ribs cracked there a little bit. You know, well, it wasn't really. It was more cartilage, but it, everything else is like healed, but it's like, oh, that still hurts. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to get deep right there, but yeah, you know, no. it was, I'm glad, I'm glad you're, you're alive. So, yeah, talking with the doctor yesterday, you know, he's never had a case where somebody's actually had CPR that immediate in a field, just yeah. in the so middle like of nowhere. Like I said, I think we were meant to be there, and God just put us there for Guardian you. Guardian angels. So, yeah, yeah Guardian I mean, angels was there. He, he got uh, CPR at the side of the road, which is, I've actually, I don't think I've ever had that happen before. That's such a unique thing to have happened to him. That's what really saved him. You know, the fact that they maintained oxygen to the brain the whole time and then brought them, brought him to me as quickly as they could, got him into the procedure that he needed. Uh, but I, I think the main thing is he was super fit and someone got to him that knew what they were doing at the side of the road. It's amazing, really. It was about six weeks after his heart attack that doctors cleared Dan to get back on his bicycle, something he doesn't take for granted these days, along with simply enjoying each day. It puts you in a perspective that there's a lot to life and I've and as silly as it sounds you may not have tomorrow to do what you want to do today so it's it's a cliche but to me now it means a whole lot don't put off what you can do today because you might not have a chance and it's so true um, when Lisa Kirk got, Kirkman got to me um, I was flatlined white as a ghost and she was right behind me and no pulse and no breathing I was certain he was dead um, and I have some experience with that, prosecuting homicides and going on scenes. And, um, but then when I got the call that he was in the hospital and doing well and there were no deficits, lots to be thankful for. I think it was meant to be. I think people pop up in your life for all sorts of reasons. His life was changed. My life was changed. Great refresher of what life's about. He's a walking miracle. I don't believe in coincidence, and I think that I believe in, in uh, divine intervention and, and the reason that we do what we do, and to see him um, alive and bright and you know, no residual effects. We see um, so much darkness, and there's so much darkness in the world, and when you see a human life, as precious as it is, be given a second chance, and then to be able to meet these people and speak with them and share stories, um, you know, the people behind the badge. You know, these are human beings that, that breathe and, and live and cry and hurt, and we care about these situations. And to be able to meet Dan and Ann under these circumstances is a gift that we can't give back. Uh, when I saw him, I, I just couldn't believe I would ever have him, you know, in front of me talking. And, you know, seeing him, that he's doing great. I mean, he's walking, he's talking, he's back in his bicycle. and. And uh, it's just completely sad. It is very, it's a great satisfaction for me to, to see him alive. Dan feels it's important to share his story. He hopes others can learn from it and become more aware of heart disease and make changes in their life now. Obviously, being super fit or fit is no guarantees to a long life. 
coronary artery disease is a, uh, it's a really a, a hidden or a silent killer, and it can be happening in the background, which is why people need to get checked out early. Go see your doctor. Let us do some screening. Let us look for these things early on, even if you feel well. And it's, it's a bit counterintuitive, but it's the right move. Come see me. I can prevent a lot of this stuff. I think that's a good thing to look at your life differently. Um, changing up a few things probably made a difference. Diet-wise, I think everybody should probably revisit how they're ultimately eating and what they're eating. Um, I wasn't really a you know, hardcore plant-based guy, but I think I'm becoming that, I think for longevity. I think if you don't find a reason to change up your life, then you're missing out on an opportunity, and an opportunity which I do have now, I'm gonna take advantage of it. Now, Dan tells me one of the screenings he now mentions to others who ask him what can they do to avoid this is called a heart CT scan. It's something we've told you about here on Your Healthy Family. It's a simple, quick procedure that's a way for doctors to get a glimpse inside your heart at the amount of calcium that could be building in your arteries. No matter how physically fit you may or may not be, and I'll put a link to my story on a heart CT scan in the article with this web story. If you're a healthy family, I'm Ira Cronin. For more health stories, head to yourhealthyfamily.com.